What's going on everybody and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. Today's video has one purpose and one purpose only and that's to find out if 1924 coming out of Old Forester is better than these other three bottles that you see in my collection. We have an Old Forester single barrel cash strength Georgia WOB pick. We have an Old Forester single barrel 100 proof pick and we have an Old Forester 1910. I was gonna do 1920 but I think I like 1910 better. That's a video for another time. Now here's the big debate as well for me tonight. I've heard that a lot of people like these Old Forester single barrel 100 proofs more than they like the Old Forester cash strength picks. Now this is obviously going to be different depending on what pick you have, but for me, this is what I have in my collection. So not only are we finding out if 1924 is better, but I'm also curious which one of these turns out on top. So we're gonna pour these up, we're gonna mix them up, we're gonna do this blind. Let's get into it right now. Now, before I pour them up, let me explain how this is going to work. You see an A on our sample over here. That has an A, the glass has an A. We have a B with a dot. I put a little dot on this one. There's a dot on the bottom of this glass, but again, I can't see the dot when I'm drinking the glass. We have a separate B over here, which doesn't have a dot on it. And then we have C. So once we mix these up, we don't know which one's which, but we will still be able to distinguish which two Bs we have. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of this tonight. We got a lot to drink. There is a pour line on here, so that's what I'll use. probably about an ounce. If you're curious, the set I'm using is actually from Great Whiskey Challenge. They're an awesome kit. I think they have, we have A, Bs, and Cs. I think they have D, Zs, and Fs as well. I need to get my hands on some of those. I'm going to slide these bottles out just a little bit. We have a Whiskey Wisdom wheel that we can use to spin these up. Seems good enough. Let's talk about these bottles a little bit before we dive into them. First things first, the 1924, I haven't had it before. Thank you to ASB in my Discord for sending me the sample. I wouldn't have an opportunity to try it without you. That being said, this is 791110, 79% corn, 11% rye, 10% malted barley. It comes in at $115. Compare that to 721810, which is the rest of these mash bills, 72% corn, 18% rye, 10% malted barley. This is usually in that, what, 80 to $85 range. These are like 50 to $55 range. And then the 1910, I still think it's 55 here in Pennsylvania. Maybe it's at 60 now. So other than the 1924 with the 10 year old age statement, none of these are age stated. I don't even know like a range. I, I would guess like six to seven years maybe on these. Obviously the single barrels might be a little bit different than the 1910, but you guys can let me know in the comment section below if there is like an age range when it comes to 1910, 1920, or any of the single barrel expressions. That's enough about that though. Let's dive into our first glass over here. Find out which one we like the best. I don't really care which one's which, but let's find out which one we like the best. Cheers y'all. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is also 100 proof. So 100 proof, this one's coming in. I think these range from like 120 to 135 proof. This particular one is 124.8, which is on the lower proof range of these particular releases. Obviously this is coming in at a single barrel 100 proof. And then the 1910 says right on the sticker here, 93 proof. So ranges all over the place when it comes to proof. This one right here though, I don't really know where this is at. This one doesn't seem too hot. I will say it's probably not the 124 proof, but it could be 100, it could be 93, not quite sure. A very good flavor profile on this. Very, very sweet though. If anybody knows about me and whiskey, I love a sweet whiskey. I was expecting a little bit more rye spice when it comes to 18 or even 11% rye, but not a lot of kick on this when it comes to a spice. I will say it's very sweet. Let's see if that transitions across the board with different ryes and different proofs. Definitely a lot more spiciness on this one. And I will say more proof, but I don't think, again, this might be the 93 proof. This might be the 1910 off the bat because I still don't think this is 120 something proof, but definitely gave me more kick than this one over here. A lot more flavor though. There's a lot more flavor on this glass. A lot similar when it comes to the flavor, a little bit more spice in the middle, like I mentioned. Still some very good sweetness, but definitely some more ethanol and some more flavor with that one. Let's get into this glass. We're gonna go through these a couple of times. I can promise you that. Okay, this is throwing me off now. I like this, I like this a lot. I like not knowing. So this didn't drink 124 proof for me at all. But so far, these drink very easy. And this one, it doesn't drink hot. I wouldn't say it drinks hot for 124 proof. If it's 93 proof, it probably drinks hot. But for right now, this is the highest proof 
but doesn't drink anywhere near 124 proof. So 93, maybe 100, maybe. And then this one being the 124, maybe, but that's throwing me off completely. The one thing that I will say, and I'm going to tell you this off the rip, this has the most color. I know these should be blacked out Glen Cairns. I've talked to uh, Great Whiskey Challenge about getting blacked out Glens or blacked out glasses for these because this does have the most color, but I'll be honest with you, none of these really stand out as like the darkest. And usually you're thinking maybe that 10 year age statement, but I will say I have no clue. I mean, low proof again, this has to be the highest proof. This one, no, no, no. Which one was it? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one has to be the highest proof. But again, nowhere, I can't believe if this is 124 proof that that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be, that's got to be the 124 proof. But that doesn't drink anywhere near 124 proof. These three, though, completely lost. Don't know which one's 93. Don't know which one's 100. Don't know which one has a 10-year age statement. Don't know which one doesn't. So let's go back through a couple more times here couple of more times. Is that how you say that? A couple more times, not a couple of more times. This one right here gives me a little bit of funkiness on the nose. I don't nose a lot, but this one right here just gives me like a little bit of grassy, a little bit of more like of an herbal flavor off of the nose. These are wildly different, wildly different across the board. I don't know which one's which. I don't even know which one I like the best at this point. Originally, this was just very good sweetness, but now it's giving me a little bit of funky flavors that I wasn't getting off the rip. Do I say off the rip too much? And the more and more I sip this one, the less and less it tastes like 124 proof. It definitely has a big ethanol kick on the nose. Flavor wise though, you get the rye spice on this one. This one is giving me the rye spice. If I had to guess, this has to be 18% rye versus 11% rye. This one almost tastes like nothing. After you drink these two, which have a very good, very distinct flavor profile, the sweetness on this, the spiciness on this, the ethanol on this, then you get to this third glass here and it's almost like, where'd, where'd all the flavors go? Seems very quiet, very one-dimensional. I get, I mean, traditional bourbon notes, I want to say. Almost a little bit of a nuttiness on this, though, that I wasn't getting on any of the other glasses, at least the second time through. That, that just seems like it's missing everything to me. That just seems, compared to these two so far, we haven't gotten into this one a second time, but compared to these two so far, it just seems watered down. You get a little bit of vanillas, a little bit of caramels, but like I'm missing oak on this. I'm making missing spice on this. There's not a lot of sweetness. There's like a little bit on the front of the tongue. And again, maybe a little bit of nutty, nuttiness in there, which I do enjoy usually, but for this, for this particular glass, it just seems watered down. The nose on this one, the nose on this one is almost like florally. This seems like a, this is like a spring day when it comes to the nose. I've either gotten sick between drinking these two glasses and drinking these two glasses, or these two glasses just have so much more flavor, so much more to offer with the flavor profile that these two just seem meh. Like these two just don't feel like they're doing anything for me after I drink these two particular glasses. Sweetness, spiciness, I want to mix these two and make the perfect glass. We're not going to do that right now. Maybe we will later if it's something that I have more of. But I got to tell you, these two are doing a lot more for me. Whether I love them or hate them, they're giving me more and I like that. I did a, I did a blue note pick as my first pick ever and there's a bubblegum note to this. And the crazy thing is I feel like I picked that up on this particular bottle at one point. I can't remember. I have to go back and look. But there's no there's no chance in hell this is 124 proof. So it's not that. But maybe it's something in Old Forester that I've just missed before. This glass, it has a very sweet, bubblegummy, juicy fruit note. That's exactly what it is. I like it. I like that juicy fruit. I like that bubble gummy. Again, these are single barrels, so they're going to differ across the board. But for right now, I kind of feel like these are the two single barrels. I don't know which one I like better. The question becomes, which one's the 1924 over here? This I would almost feel like because 10 years and it is darker. I don't want to go off of that, but both of these glasses just aren't doing it for me.
You know the Sour Patch commercial where it's like first they're sour, then they're sweet? I feel like this is the opposite. First it's sweet, then it's sour. Like this, it gives me kind of a soury note. It gives me like a, I'm sucking on a lemon head and it gives me that soury, like it makes the back of your, you know when like this part of your mouth like kind of clenches up a little bit because of sour? I feel like I'm getting that on that particular glass. I'll be honest with you, I haven't drank much of this glass right here. It's just not doing anything for me. But let's get into this one right here. I feel like I'm finally able to pull some notes out of this. And the one thing that I'm picking up amongst all of these glasses on this particular glass is like a red raspberry note. There's some red fruit note on this that is very enjoyable. It just seems ever so faint and I wish there was more of it. This glass on the other hand, I feel like I'm getting nothing. So we're gonna take a big sip because we got a lot left of this glass and not a lot of these. I don't like it. I don't hate it. I'm not gonna tell you that I hate it. But it's, it's, it's one dimensional, it's not complex. There's not much going on in this glass over here. If somebody were to send me this entire blind, like truly blind, I didn't know it was four Old Foresters at all. They just sent me four glasses of whiskey and they were to ask me questions about it. Like Matt Madness or like Dusty Dan is doing right now in March. I would not tell you that all four of these are Old Forester or that they even came from the same distillery. This is just wild how different they actually are. I know you might not want to hear this, but I feel like this glass might be jumping this glass. Like this is a fourth quarter comeback of the century. I never truly loved this glass. I just felt like the other two glasses over here weren't giving me enough. I do feel like, I do feel like this glass right here is our winner, but I'm not sure on that yet either. Maybe I am sure of that. I think right now, this is number one, one of these is number two, and then this is number four. So one, mate, two or three here, and then this is number four. I don't know how we're gonna score it with these particular two. We've got a sip left of each, so that's the only way we're gonna be able to call it, but we have to call it. This was winning the entire time. That raspberry note that I picked up on this at the very tail end of it, kind of put this one back in front of this one, but I don't know, Let's one, one sip, everybody knows the rules. I mean, that's tough. That's really, really tough. This is obviously number one for me. This right here is like 2A and 2B. These these are almost interchangeable. It's like, which night is it? Did I eat the right thing? Did I drink enough water? But for right now, I'm gonna flip-flop it. Originally, this one was winning, but I'm gonna give it to this one. I'm gonna say, this is two, this is three, and then this glass back here, this is just not doing it for me. I would hate, I would hate to see that this is the 1924. Because if this is the 1924, if this is what they're putting out, the, the problem is Old Forester has so much good whiskey out already. It's not like they had to fix something up to make something better to sell product because they already have great product out. So the way I have to do this, obviously, is I have to finish this glass. We're going to flip this glass. Then I'm going to flip number three. Then we're going to flip number one, which means I still have to finish this glass. There's a lot left and I didn't truly really enjoy this, but everybody knows time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. So that's number four. This is going to be number three. This is number two. And this is number one. We're going to find out which one's which. I got a little bit left in that. So I will finish that. But let's flip number four first. And it is C. Okay. So 1910 in last. I actually didn't expect that. 1910 being in last is a very big surprise for me. Now, I honestly thought that was going to be the 1924 just because of how dark it was. And I know this has a 10 year age statement on it. But knowing that 1910 is now out. I've got to say, I still think this is the cash strength, which means one of these is 1910 and it might be our number three. Let's flip this over. And the answer is that is A. So the 1924 came in third place behind 1910. Sorry, in front of 1910, but you know what I mean. So 1910 so far, then 1924. Our winner is, I got a little bit left in here. So let's flip this over after this sip. It is B with the dot, which is this one over here. Old Forester, people say all the time, Old Forester 100 proof is better than these Old Forester cash strength picks. In this particular blind, it didn't work out that way. That is B without the dot. So that's how it's gonna that's how it's gonna score out. We go B with the dot, Old Forester cash strength, then we go to Old Forester single barrel, then 1924, then Old Forester 1910.
Now, if we've got price involved, I gotta be honest with you, I don't think it was close. This one definitely had the most flavor, the most flavor profile. The 1924 though, at $115 compared to this at $50, they were very close. This one definitely would have won if we had price involved, but very surprising that the 1910 was in last. But hey, that's where we're gonna leave you today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, at Bourbon of the Week. Click that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. I would greatly appreciate it. Check out our Patreon page and our Discord. Both those links in the description below. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. Stay healthy, stay happy. Stay trying everything from Old Forester because you never know what you're gonna get. Cheers, y'all.